You switched careers. You gave up acting and moved into writing. Yeah. What has acting taught you about writing? Um, a lot. Uh, exposition in dialogue was something that you do a lot when you're on television like I was. Um, and so it, it gave me an allergy to that. As a, I'm allergic to exposition uh, now in my writing. Uh, and I look for abs absurdly simple plots um, so that I can simply focus on the characters. And having an understanding of, you know, what dialogue is easy to say and hard to say, I think that that's helpful too. I think every writer probably has that though. You know, you find yourself, you know, playing the scene out in your head and hearing him talk and no, he wouldn't say it that way or she wouldn't say it that way, but she'd say, you know, and it just refines itself. When you write, do you imagine an actor in a particular role? I have, uh, I certainly have. I've strangely gotten them, you know, oh, when wow, they, really? yeah, I mean, when like I, who? well, for Sicario, I, you know, I, you, how could you not think of Benicio? And, mm -hmm. and I kept trying very hard not to do it. Um, you know, I, I, I thought of, uh, of Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water and Ben Foster. Really? And, and yeah, and it was, and I kept trying very hard not to because you're terrified you're going to write this thing that then feeds specifically to this one person who then won't do it. Did you um, think about being in it yourself? The Lee character? No, I can't stand acting. Okay. I, I'm so, uh, so... Got it so hard now. I had, I had, there was a scene in, in the film where I wrote this monologue uh -huh. about like the death of a way of life that this cowboy says and he rides up on a horse and David McKenzie... Uh, he the calls director. and goes, yeah, hey, congratulations, buddy. We can't find anyone that can say the monologue and ride the horse. So <laughs> get, get down here. Um, and so I did, and I, you know, I'm in a scene with Jeff Bridges. It should be, as an actor, this great thing and I'm literally like, when are we done? <laughs> get back to the hotel and get home. Taylor, what was the starting point for Hell or High Water? Uh, well, the starting point was uh, a few things. Uh, you know, I was, a, I was a new father and, uh, you know, penniless. I crammed my family into this little apartment because I stupidly at 40 decided to start writing. Um, and so, you know, one of the major themes in it is, you know, failure as a father. And, and at the same time, uh, Texas was on fire and the markets were collapsing and, and the way of life that I grew up with was, was failing and dying. And, uh, and so it was, a, it was a very personal exploration uh, of, you know, my own experiences and then of, of a way of life, you know, and, uh, and it lent itself to some pretty harsh study of, you know, us as a people, and our, our relationships, um, our relationships to people of different genders and race and everything. And it's just, you know, uh, it was really me kind of re-examining, you know, my past. What don't you want? Oh, well, uh, I think I just, uh... You know, I've been working here for 44 years. Ain't nobody ever ordered nothing but T-bone steak and a baked potato. Except this one asshole from New York tried to order trout back in 1987. We don't sell no goddamn trout. T-bone steaks. So either you don't want the corn on the cob, or you don't want the green beans. So what don't you want? For me, I, I know roughly the whole movie. I have to see the movie in my head before I start writing. Mm -hmm. I have to understand the character's arcs and what's driving this guy. What am I trying to say? And, uh, completely uh, from a landscape standpoint. And I usually, I usually drive is how I, f I find it. Um, oh. I was trying to figure a scene out when I lived in LA and I ended up in central Montana. Um, <laughs> and and didn't figure it out till I turned around. <laughs> I was in I was in like between Vegas and Barstow, and it finally <laughs> happened. Uh, it cost me like two grand. <laughs> <laughs> I read. Uh, I watched the film Kramer versus Kramer. It's an excellent film. Uh, and then I went in, to the Writers Guild and, and read the screenplay, and. Um, and it was incredibly lean and riveting, and and none of the smash cut moved here. And it was it was, even though obviously I knew how it ended, uh, it, it was brilliant. And, and his expression expression of emotion in the stage directions, it was all about emotion, uh, and, and a character's point of view. And so I, 
I, I think that they can be riveting reads. Uh, I agree that they're not meant to be. It's a, it's a blueprint to build something uh, at the end of the day. And, uh, and yet, it can be transcendent uh, sometimes, and I thought that screenplay was. Hi, I'm Taraji P. Henson. What's going on? I'm Alicia Keys. Matt Damon. Naomi Harris. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos, be sure to subscribe to Hollywood Reporter. I don't work for the Hollywood Reporter. They paid me to say that, though.